Good evening. Welcome to QUT Web News. Good evening. The Queensland Health Minister has ordered two separate investigations into an incident where a full-term pregnant woman lost her unborn child. The woman was in labour for nearly a week and repeatedly turned away by the Rockhampton Hospital. The pregnancy had been problem-free. Emma Green went to hospital on her due date to induce her baby. She was sent home when this proved ineffective. When she started having contractions four days later, she returned to the hospital. And then they just sent her away. No one even checked her, a nurse, doctor or nothing. They were told to go away because they were busy. After experiencing contractions every eight minutes over the weekend, Ms Green went back, only to be sent home again. The following morning, her baby stopped kicking. Again, the hospital told her to come back later that afternoon. By the time she had the scan, it was too late. Last night, Ms Green went to a private hospital where her baby was delivered stillborn. Health Minister Lawrence Springborg has ordered an inquiry by the Rockhampton Hospital Board and a wider probe into public hospital procedures. He expressed his condolences to Ms Green and her family. Anyone with any semblance of any human compassion would understand and feel empathy for the couple. The important thing is to understand though that within Queensland Health we provide millions of occasions of really good service each year. Sometimes some things don't go right. Premier Campbell Newman also defended the state's hospital system. Because the performance of our hospitals across this state has uh, dramatically improved, particularly emergency departments uh, and uh, those are uh, facts that have been published. Ms Green paid more than $7,000 for the private hospital. Mr Springboard says his department may pick up the cost. Kate Fallis, QUT News. To federal politics now and the chief opposition whip Warren Ench is at the centre of an embarrassing situation which threatens to overshadow Tony Abbott's budget reply. Mr Ench is under attack for denying Labor MP Michelle Rowland leave to take care for her sick child. In about half an hour, the opposition leader Tony Abbott delivers his budget reply. But today the political focus has been on Labor MP Michelle Rowland, who'd been refused parliamentary leave. The Prime Minister was outraged. What has happened with this matter makes an absolute mockery of everything the leader of the opposition has ever said about working women. It just shows so clearly that he doesn't get it. The opposition says it wasn't aware Michelle Rowland's child was ill. If we knew that Michelle Rowland had a sick child on Monday morning, Warren Inch would have said to her, you should go home today. My application explicitly said that uh, I would, my baby's at home sick. I'd be grateful to be home with her on Thursday night. It's the last thing the opposition needs on budget reply day. Tony Abbott is expected to support many of Labor's cuts, but the government believes his plans are more sinister. Those plans, I believe, are to cut to the bone. Mr Abbott's approach tonight is secret, savage cuts. Despite speculation, the coalition is remaining tight-lipped. It's incredibly sweet of you to invite me to run a commentary on a speech that Tony Abbott has yet to deliver. At a breakfast function in Perth this morning, one well-known coalition face couldn't help himself. We balanced the budget. It's tumultuous applause. We introduced labour market reform. You know, rapturous applause. Mitchell Dunk, QUT News. A National Seniors Summit has been held in Ipswich today to discuss how the government's budget will affect them. Close to 200 people attended, eager that Canberra hears their concerns. The federal budget received a cautious welcome from this community of over 50s. The hot topic of today was a pilot scheme to allow senior citizens to downsize the family home without affecting their age pension. The biggest issue is not having enough age appropriate homes available in areas of demand. All good and well to say yes we'll build age friendly, friendly homes but we'll locate them out in the, the back block somewhere. For people as they age, for older Australians, they want to be in their local community, their local environment. They say the government scheme isn't perfect, but it's a start. They'd like to see the Queensland State Government support the scheme, with stamp duty concessions for people downsizing. I think the importance of that is it's not just about seniors, it's also about appreciating the freeing up stock for young people, young families, to be able to live in those areas. Bronwyn Bishop, Shadow Minister for Seniors, was due to attend today, but pulled out at the last minute. The Mayor of Ipswich says there's a lack of respect for seniors. 
the seniors of this country have put the backbone into this country. They deserve the respect of the future and that's what I'm going to make sure that happens. Over 50s make up 44% of voters and will have a significant impact at this year's election. However, the overwhelming feeling here today is that the government still lacks understanding of the financial struggles of senior citizens. They don't seem to be wanting to know us for some unknown reason. We've done our bit to support the country. I think it's time the government did their bit to support us. Catherine Tucker, QUT News. A prevention program is underway to reduce the risk of stroke, the second largest killer in Australia and the leading cause of disability. Brisbane commuters lined up today for a free health check, part of the Know Your Numbers campaign. On their way to work, commuters could have their blood pressure checked and diabetes risk assessed, which are the main causes of a stroke. Health Minister Lawrence Springborg helped promote the Stroke Foundation's push to lower the risk of vascular disease, stroke and type 2 diabetes. We have 600 odd pharmacies that are participating in this program and I'd like to encourage Queenslanders to go in and to actually have a free health check. Last year, more than 38,000 Queenslanders visited health check stations with almost half unknowingly suffering from high blood pressure. The awareness was raised around that, those figures as well as then many of those people then took actions. But there are other early indicators. The Seekers singer Judith Durham is lucky to have sought medical attention after a life-threatening cerebral haemorrhage. While the National Stroke Foundation continues to raise awareness of the risk factors associated with stroke, another leading institution today received some welcome news. It came in the form of an annual half a million dollar donation to the Children's Health Foundation from the Golden Caskets Community Program. The funds will be used by the Royal Children's Hospital to research more effective ways to treat childhood illnesses. It will help kids like five-year-old Sam who suffers from severe asthma. Without your you know, ongoing generous support, you know, the, um, the amazing doctors and professors that work here wouldn't be able to continue their, their research and also have the state-of-the-art technology that help keep these little boys alive. Chanel Roger, QUT News. A Queensland scientist has more than two million extra reasons to smile tonight. He's been awarded Premier's Science Fellowship for his study of genetics. The state's top science prize is worth $1.25 million and it's been matched dollar for dollar by the University of Queensland. Premier Newman revealed the winner at the newly opened Translational Research Institute. Professor Matthew Brown uh, is the recipient of the Premier's Fellowship for 2013. So congratulations, Matt. <laughs> Professor Brown received the award for his breakthrough study into treatments for rheumatoid arthritis and tuberculosis. It's a great honour, uh, both as a member of University of Queensland and also of the sort of scientific fellowship of uh, Queensland uh, to be given this award. Premier Newman thanked Professor Brown for his remarkable work. The awarding of the fellowship to Professor Brown has a special significance for Premier Newman. His wife Lisa suffers from rheumatoid arthritis, which affects between 1 and 2% of the population. Terry Maureen suffers from rheumatoid arthritis. He says Professor Brown's research changed his life. I don't have any pain whatsoever. I have my joints and everything is working fine, you know. Uh, they got me early, which is my saviour. Tim Clark is another patient grateful for the treatment. I'm leaving as, as normal a life as I can. Uh, with my family and my two young sons. Brendan Harney, QUT News. A blockbuster local league derby tomorrow night as the Brisbane Broncos take on the Gold Coast Titans. But with injuries to Scott Prince, Ben Hannant and now Justin Hodges, things aren't looking good for the Bronx. Painkillers weren't enough to keep Justin Hodges on the field at Broncos training this morning. He left about 15 minutes in with a suspected fracture in his rib from last week's loss against Parramatta. He's not the only player with injuries. Scott Prince and Ben Hannett also ruled out. It's been a disappointing few weeks for the Broncos. But coach Anthony Griffin is hoping they can repeat their round five win against the Titans at Suncorp. Yeah, I thought the first round we played and we, we did a pretty good job there. We're going to have to do that again. There's been further tension between the two teams after the Broncos revealed yesterday they'd be opening a $6.5 billion Junior Broncos Academy on Titans turf. 
but Broncos CEO Paul White denies its battleground. We need to be thinking innovatively about how how we uh, you know grow and develop uh, our club, but at the same time the game in general. The Broncos are looking to secure a win tomorrow night to carry them through the season, but the Titans won't give up without a fight. Cool temperatures at Kingscliff didn't deter the Titans' training. Co-captain Greg Bird was eager for revenge and the news on Hodges only fuelled the fire. Got to prepare the, as, as if he's playing, but if he's not, I guess that's going to be a little, little bonus for us. Maritza Munoz, QUT News. Time now for a look at the weather. It was a cloudy day in Brisbane today. Across the southeast, the Gold Coast was the only city to escape the showers with a top of 20 degrees. During the day, temperatures rose to 18 in Brisbane and Ipswich, but topped out at only 17 on the Sunshine Coast. Around the nation tomorrow, Sydney's in for a sunny day with a max of 21. Canberra's in for a cold morning with temperatures getting as low as 1. Melbourne will have a high of 15 degrees and Adelaide a high of 18. The forecast for Queensland and most of the state will wake up to grey skies tomorrow. Cairns will have a top of 28 with showers on the coast and ranges. Townsville will reach 27 degrees after a cloudy morning. Mackay and Rockhampton should reach the mid-20s. The outlook for Brisbane, tomorrow will be mostly sunny with tops of 24 degrees. Brisbane will get cooler over the weekend, dropping down to 9 degrees on Sunday morning. And that brings you up to date with the weather. That's all the news we have for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow night with more QT Web News. Good night. Good night.